Good day, and uh, thank you for having me here. I am Father Jude Javines SVD, and I would like to uh, share something for your recollection, especially as you uh, finish your basic education uh, course. This is the outline of my presentation. I would like to start with uh, the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament. And then uh, I'd like to share with you about Ikigai, identifying our purpose. And uh, I'd like to end with the story of Malala, in which I would presuppose some, if not all of you, are familiar. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 says, Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you, he will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. I chose this biblical citation because it resonates with somebody perhaps like your case that will embark into another phase of journey. Just like your parents or friends will provide you your assurance, the needed assurance that everything will be okay, especially the jungle of education out there. It is also an assurance addressed by God to those who believe and have faith in Him that He will always be with us. Thus, ang tawag natin sa Diyos ay Emmanuel. God is with us. And I'd like to take off from Deuteronomy with the short story of the stolen watch. Ito ay kwento ng isang estudyante na mahilig manguha ng gamit na hindi kanya. Isang araw, masok ang kaklase niya at mayroong uh, bagong relo or watch. At nakita niya ito at nagustuhan ito. Kaya sabi niya sa sarili niya, gusto kong kunin yung relo na yan. Noong uh, nag-recess ay accidentally naiwan yung new watch ng kanyang kaklase sa kanyang desk. Kaya... Sinamantala ito ng uh, estudyante na ito. Kinuha niya at lumabas siya ng classroom. Subalit, pagkatapos ng recess ay nag-complain yung may-ari ng watch. Sabi na sa teacher na, teacher, nawawala po yung aking relo na bago. At uh, sabi ng teacher, kung sino mang nakakita at kumuha noon ay isa uli na ngayon. Subalit, walang... Uh, gumalaw, wala nagsauli. Kaya ang sinabi ng teacher, hindi tayo lalabas ng classroom na ito hanggat hindi nakikita at isa sa uli ang relo ng inyong kaklase. At ang ginawa ng teacher ay pinatayo niya ang kanyang mga, lahat ng estudyante maliban sa nawalan ng relo at sabi niya, ako ay pupunta sa bawat isa sa inyo at habang ginagawa ko ito ay ipikit ninyo ang inyong mga mata at titingnan ko ang bawat bulsa ninyo kung nandoon ang nawawalang relo. At ginawa ito ng teacher at pagkatapos ng lang sandali bumalik sa kanyang uh, table ng teacher at sabi niya nakita ko na ang relo. Pagkatapos, pinapasok yung estudyante na nawawalan, na nawalan ng relo at ibinigay sa kanya. Pero hindi nagtatapos ang kwento doon. Pagkatapos, ng ilang araw ay yung estudyante na ito na kumuha sa relo ng kanyang kaklase, nagpaiwan at kinaus kinausap niya ang teacher niya. Sabi niya, teacher, gusto ko pong magtapat sa inyo. Ako po yung kumuha ng relo na iyon. At alam ko na alam mo dahil ikaw ang kumuha noon sa aking bulsa dahil takapikit ako at ramdam ko na ikaw ang kumuha noon. Subalit, nagulat siya dahil sabi ng picture niya. Sa totoo lang, hindi ko alam na ikaw ang kumuha. Nagulat yung estudyante. At sabi niya, bakit hindi niyo po alam? Kayo nga po ang nag-check ng bawat bulsa namin. At sabi ng teacher na iyon, sabi niya, hindi ko alam na ikaw ang kumuha. Sabalit alam ko, galing yun sa isang bulsa. 
Dahil nung ginagawa ko yun, ay nakapikit din ang aking mata. Yung kwentong ito, ang nagtulak sa estudyante na ito para magbago sa kanyang buhay. Iwanan yung hindi masama, yung masama na ginagawa niya na manguha ng gamit ng iba. Pero ano pa yung mensahe ng kwentong ito para sa inyo, para sa atin? Una ay, una ay yung kwentong ito ay nagbibigay sa akin, sa atin ng ikalawang pagkakataon. Nagkakamali tayo sa buhay, sa inyong susungin, magkakaroon ng ngayon ng mga pagkakamali. Subalit, kagaya ng kwento, lahat binibigyan tayo ng kalawang pagkakataon. Ng ating mga magulang, ng eskwelahan, ng Diyos. At kalawa, nagbibigyan ito ng pagkakataon, opportunity sa atin na magbago. Ikatlo, ay, ito ay nag-aanyaya sa atin na hanapin yung ating uh, purpose sa buhay. At ito ang uh, tatandaan natin habang nagpapatuloy tayo sa recollection na ito. Things to remember. First, you are important and you matter. Ang dangal mo ang importante dito. Sa kwento, doon natin makikita na ibalik ng batang iyon, ng estudyante niyo, ang dangal niya. Dahil binigyan sa ng kalawang pagkakataon. You are so loved. Mahal tayo. Ating mga magulang, mga kaibigan ng Diyos. At your mistakes don't define you. Yung ating mga pagkakamali, hindi yun ang nagbibigay sa atin ng uh, ating definisyon bilang isang tao. And it's okay to ask for help, kagaya ng ginawa ng estudyante sa kwento. And you're allowed to say no. Ibig sabihin, pwede tayong humindi sa isang pagkakamali, sa isang hindi maganda ang gagawin natin. And your wants and your needs are valid. Kailangan lang i-balance natin ito. And the third, the, la, the next is productivity doesn't define your worth. And last, your boundaries are important and worth respect. Lahat tayo, meron tayong mga tinatawag na mga boundaries at kailangan ito irespeto ng iba. At irespeto din natin ang boundaries ng ibang tao. And let me proceed to sabihin natin na ang maganda talaga sa generation ninyo na magtatapos ay meron kayong tinatawag luxury of choices in vis-a-vis -vis education. You have at least three major choices as you graduate. First, trabaho. Pwede kayong magtrabaho after graduation ng uh, grade 12. Pwede kayong magtayo ng inyong negosyo. Ikatlo, you can proceed to college. Kaya ito yung sinasabi ng critical program na trabaho, negosyo, kolehiyo. Kaya napakapalag ninyo. You have opportunities. And let me share now with uh, the word ikigai. Ano ibig sabihin nito? And I hope you will learn from this. Ang ikigai ay uh, isang Japanese concept that combines the term iki, meaning alive or life, and gai, meaning benefit or worth. When combined, these terms mean that which gives life, give your life worth, meaning or purpose. Kaya yung ikigai put together is your purpose. Ikigai is similar to the French term raison d'etre or reason for being. Bakit ako nandito? Ano yung dahilan? Bakit ako nandito? Anong kahalagahan? Kung bakit ako nandito? Purpose. At sana, and I'm sure, na itanong nyo na yan sa inyong sarili maraming beses. So in a word, ikigai means our life purpose. Ikigai means our life purpose. Ito ang uh, framework ng Ikigai. Apat ang variants niya. Oh, by, represented by 
the four circles. Dito sa taas, eh, sinasabi na yung mga bagay, things that you love. On the left side, you have things that you're great of. Yung mga magaling ka. On the right side, yung mga the world, what the world needs. And sa baba, ay ano yung mga bagay na binabayaran ka o binibigyan ka ng premium or price or sweldo. These are the four variants. At sa gitna, yun ay sinasabi na that defines your purpose. Mayroon akong video at uh, we will take a pause para panuorin nyo yung video about Ikigai. So napanood na natin ang video and uh, I would suggest na let us have a little activity, short activity. Ito yung instruction on activity. In a piece of paper, gumawa kayo ng apat na columns. Okay? Ito ay nasa next slide. Consider yung apat na variants. Okay? Uh, what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you're being compensated or paid for. Ang gagawin nyo lang, spontaneous, anong papasok sa isip nyo, based on the column, isulat nyo lang ang mga bagay na iyon. Ito yung, uh, um, ito yung guide, what you love, what you are good at, what the world needs, and what you are paid for. Ito yung apat na variants. Okay? We will give you time for that para isulat ito at Kung kinakailangan, kung mayroon pang oras, you can have uh, uh, sharing yung katabi nyo. Siguro dalawa, pwede kayo magbahaginan uh, so that you will also know each other's strength. Okay? Pwede nyo gawin yan. So ito yung uh, another presentation of the framework of Ikigai. 
find your purpose. Sabi ni Aristotle, where the needs of the world and your talents cross, there lies your vocation. Okay, so ulitin ko, dito, what you love doing and what you're good at, that's your passion. What you love doing and that's what the world needs, that your, that's your mission. Okay, what the world needs and you are paid for it, that's your vocation. And what you're good at and you're paid for it, that's your profession. So ito yung um, simple explanation ng ikigai. And my own humble opinion is if you develop your self-worth through your purpose and through your passion, mission, profession, and vocation, it will be easier for you to establish your direction. Ito yung objective nito. It will take time because this is a process. Hindi po ito nangyayari overnight. And I hope you will continue to practice this. Okay? Kahit ako, I'm still doing this until now. So, ito yung uh, ibig sabihin nito. The intersection of what you love and what you're good at is your passion. At the intersection of what you love and what the world needs, you're the mission. I explained this already. At the intersection of what the world needs and what you can get paid for is your vocation. At the intersection of what you're good at and what you can get paid for is your profession. Okay? So ito po ang ibig sabihin ng ikigai. And uh, I would like to uh, end my sharing with the Malala Yousafzai story. Okay? Uh, it's very... It's a very touching story of Malala Yousafzai. And uh, I would like to uh, pause here and uh, for you to watch and be inspired by her video. And finally tonight, our person of the week. There was another name on the shortlist for the Nobel Peace Prize today. Malala, 16 years old, the youngest nominee. She was shot because she spoke up for the 31 million girls around the world who cannot get an education. Her new book is I Am Malala. And tonight, the miracles, the reason she survived that bullet from the Taliban. Two men approach a Pakistani school bus like this one, men with beards and a Donna Colt 45. One of them climbs on the bus and asks a question, who is Malala? She doesn't remember what happened next, but her friend described the moment. He fired three, three bullets, and what hit you on the left side of, uh, of my head. I would have been doing like this. So I hide my face because there was gunpowder on my fingers. She is bleeding in grave condition. Two hours pass before a helicopter can deliver her from a local hospital to a military surgeon. He spends five hours trying to relieve the swelling on her brain and remove tiny clots. By a strange coincidence, there is someone in Pakistan for the first time. A top specialist in pediatric trauma from England, Dr. Fiona Reynolds, with her colleague Dr. Javi Payani. They've been sitting in long governmental meetings on medical programs when suddenly Dr. Reynolds is told to race out and try to save the life of a famous and dying child. The tubes have given Malala an infection. The machines are improperly set, her blood isn't clotting, her lungs and kidneys are beginning to fail. She becomes septic. It's obvious that she had a very serious life-threatening infection. Dr. Reynolds makes a risky recommendation to take the gravely ill girl on an eight-hour trip to a high-tech hospital in England. From another Muslim country comes a life-giving offer. The Emir of the United Arab Emirates sends one of his royal planes outfitted as a hospital, a state-of-the-art intensive care unit. And for the entire eight-hour flight to England, Dr. Reynolds and Dr. Kayani keep all alive breath by breath, organ by organ. And they also have noticed something else that defies possibility. The bullet took a path that simply cannot be believed. The chances of being shot at point blank range in the head and that happening, I don't know. But it is amazing. Truly amazing. I, I don't know why she survived. Maybe his hand was shaky. He hit her. There. So it goes under the skin, near the skull. A bullet 
traveling 1,000 feet per second slips under Malala's skin. But as it hits toward her brain, that bone turns out to be so strong and curved, it forces the bull to ricochet away, and instead slashes her eardrum, severs the nerve in her face, and hits her shoulder. The fact she didn't die on the spot, or very soon afterwards, and to my mind is nothing short of miracles. Miracle? If you believe in miracles, yes. Absolutely. Maybe. I had the bad boy and hit the brain, and God saved me. But still, doctors have no idea if she'll ever walk, or see, or be able to speak again. They are amazed for moments after her eyes open. She uses a letter board to spell out in English the words country, and then father. Ahead of her, three months of punishing therapy and more surgery to reconnect the nerve in her face. Through it all, Dr. Reynolds notes of her young patient. I've never seen Lala cry, never. She's incredibly sweet. She had to have some sutures uh, in her uh, wounded scalp. And she also had to have a needle to drain some uh, infected fluid from her head. On both occasions, she didn't wince, she didn't cry, she didn't even squeeze my hand when I was sticking needles into her. I didn't cry because now I totally changed after that incident. But I don't know how did I change. I don't know what happened to me. But I had to say, who, who can do this? Them. We all cry. I was feeling that this is a new life. Lala says she thinks death just wasn't ready for her. I think death didn't want to kill me. And God was with me. And the people prayed for me. And so we choose Malala Yosef. Okay. Yung hindi nasabi doon sa video ay in 2012, Malala was the recipient of Pakistan's first National Youth Peace Prize and 2013 Sakharov Prize. Sa batang sa murang edad niya. Kasi edad niyo lang si Malala Yusufzai, isang high school student. In 2014, she was the co-recipient of the 2014 Nobel Peace Prize along with Kailash Satarte of India. At sabi dito, at the age of 17, halos kasi edad niyo, mas matanda kayo ng isang taon, at the age of 17, she was the youngest ever Nobel Prize laureate or awardee. Siping niyo yan. So, malaki ang possibility for somebody in your group to get this award. In 2015, Malala was the subject of the Oscar shortlisted documentary entitled, He Made Me Malala. In 2013, 2014, and 2015, so on, issues of Time magazine featured her as one of the most influential people globally. So, it doesn't have to be, if you're young or old, marami kang pagkakataon na makatulong. Yan ang sinasabi doon sa ikigay to have your mission. An example of Malala, kaya pinili ko siya, although you're familiar with her already, dahil she is a constant reminder to all of us about our purpose, our ikigay, kung ano tayo makatulong, paano tayo makakatulong sa ating kapwa. In 2017, she was awarded honorary Canadian citizenship and became the youngest person to address the House of Commons of Canada. Mga dito sa atin, yung ating mga politiko, Congress, Senate, siya ang pinakabata na nakagawa doon. Manala found her ikigai, her purpose of living, and that is to be a voice of young women in her country. So, sa batang edad niya, murang edad, nakita na niya kung ano ang kailangan gawin niya. The purpose, kanyang ikigay. Thus, as you leave the portal of your beloved alma mater, challenge yourselves to carve your own ikigay, your own purpose. Gumawa kayo ng sarili niyong ikigay by the four variants Establish and identify your own passion, your own vocation, your future profession, and contribute to the world 
by doing your mission. Thank you and God bless.